Yo, what's up guys? It's Overt and going to be doing a vlog here today about the UFC fight. It's going to be going over the results and all that stuff. My thoughts on them, my opinions, and what's coming next for the fighters. Obviously, I'm doing a car vlog. It's kind of my thing with these, I guess. I don't know. A little bit dark, but whatever. You can still see me. You can still see what's going on. Look at my hair. It's freaking super crazy right now. But I had a hat on, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, tonight were the fights. Anderson Silva versus Nick Diaz. Uh, Anderson Silva coming off the layoff since he broke his leg, snapped it in half against Chris Weidman and Nick Diaz coming off of a two-year layoff. Obviously, there were other fights that were awesome. We're going to be going over them real quick, and I want you guys to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And for sure, you can definitely follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff. If you guys aren't subbed to the channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just past 25,000 subscribers. And I mostly do like story times and like uh, Q&As and stuff like that. But obviously, if you guys didn't know, I'm a big fan of the fights. I'm a big fan of UFC. I've been training um, all sorts of martial arts since I've been 13 years old. My main thing is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Been doing that for about eight years now. So I think that I'm qualified to give my opinion and all that good stuff. And if you guys are subscribed to me already and you don't watch UFC fights, that's totally cool. Just leave a like to support the channel. It helps me out. Super awesome. And then go about your way. Let's get into it. So first fight that I want to bring up is um, the uh, Sarah McMahon versus Misha Tate fight. McMahon came out strong in the first round, but then the next two rounds, Misha Tate brought it to her. And she didn't get the finish, but she beat her by decision, which is super good. Misha Tate wins, overcomes uh, this, which I thought was I thought it was a good fight. And I think that Misha Tate may just get a third chance at Ronda Rousey because she's that good. She's good enough to compete again for the title. Because I mean, to be honest, man, R Rowdy Ronda Rousey is just head and shoulders above everybody else in the league, obviously. Um, and Misha Tate seems like the only girl who could really even, I mean, she's the only girl who even lasted with her. Granted, she didn't win any rounds, but she didn't get stomped out in the first round, which is all that we could really hope for in a contender right now, unless Gina Carano comes back. Anyways, moving on to the main card, Jordan Main versus, uh, Tiago Alves for the welterweight, in the welterweight division. So Tiago Alves, he's only had maybe like three fights in the past four years because he had all this medical scares and stuff like that. He's coming back, and now that he's come back after so long, it seems like he's too small for the division. He was always a short guy, but in the years that he's kind of like not been a, like in fighting consistently, bigger fighters have kind of taken over the welterweight division, in my opinion. I don't know if he can make lightweight, but if he could, I'd definitely say that that would be the way to go for him. He was getting kind of smashed against Jordan Main, who's ranked number 13. And uh, Tiago Alves, I don't know if he's ranked. He should be ranked now, top 15 now, right? Beating the guy who's number 13 should bump him up a little bit. But he actually got pretty smashed the first round and then came back in the second round and hit him with a floating rib kick. Hit him with a knee to the head while well, the guy was on the ground, but the guy didn't have no hands on the ground, just his legs, but he was crouched down, so some people were thinking it was like an illegal hit. Was not, so Tiago Alves came back to win that fight via TKO, which is absolutely awesome. Um, next fight was, uh, it was either Tim Bosch or Joe Lowe's on first. I don't know, but whatever, either way. Tim Bosch versus that other guy, who I can never remember his name, Talis Latis. He fought him. I believe it was late. Yeah, it was late as whatever. Fought him. Tim Bosch to me looks like some, like Tim Bosch. I love Tim Bosch. But to me, he looks like literally like the UFC went to some guy who's like at a barbecue. Like the guy at the barbecue who's holding a beer. He's got a pickup truck. Probably has a little kid with like, um, I would expect his little kid to have like no shoes on or something like that. That's like the type of guy Tim Bosch. If you go to any barbecue in America, you're going to find a guy who looks exactly like Tim Bosch drinking a beer there. That's what I think. Do you like this camera angle better or did you like it better this way? I don't know, whatever, we'll go there. So, um, Tim Bosch was doing very, very well until he got caught in a arm triangle choke. So, first time when he busted out of it, actually, he busted out. So, he escaped the first arm triangle by coming to the side and pushing into the guy's neck and breaking out of it, which is cool, but it requires a lot of strength, I think. Um, second time, my preferred defense, just so you guys know, is coming up, coming down. I'm giving my analysis like I could even UFC fight. I've done a little bit, so I can. But I'm not, I ain't no Tim Bosch, you know what I'm saying? I could probably take him. No, but seriously, just kid, just a little joke to calm down. So, my personal favorite defense is to give a little bump, bring my arm down, like up and in front of their face to bring it back down to my side. Um, it looked like he had an opening for that, but obviously you're tired, you're getting punched in the face, don't know what's going on. Um, he got choked out with that. Overall, though, I freaking love Tim Bosch. I hope that he comes back. He's a beast. 
And um, so Landers won that. Next fight, Joe Lozon versus Ally Aquinta. And uh, Lozon got pretty smashed in that fight. You know, he was pretty much out on his feet. He was taking big shots uh, the whole time. And I don't know where to go with Joe Lozon right now. Uh, just because he, he is like always exciting. But the past couple fights, he's just been like, um, he might be on the decline. I, I personally, I'm a big fan of Joe Lozon. Um, obviously I met him before. Awesome. Super nice guy, but I don't know. He might be, um, eating too many big shots. At least lately. I think that he is. I think that what needs to happen with him is obviously some time off. Makes sense, right? Um, but he's been fighting for a long time now. Still a beast, and I still hope to see him compete, obviously. But um, tonight was not the night for him. For me, I'm not in denial. I'm just going to say that Joe Lozon, whenever anybody asks, Joe Lozon, he won by Flying Oma Plata. That's how he won. That's it. No denial here. He beat him. Flying Oma Plata. I love Joe Lozon. I can't help it. No denial, bro. Next fight comes up with the people that are fighting, and they are going to be Tyron Woodley and Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin Gastelum. And Tyron Woodley won the fight, but it was overall pretty boring. You take these two guys that are good wrestlers, you put them up against each other, and um, it didn't seem to come out. Kelvin looked better than I thought he would look. Like, if you guys didn't know, he actually came in overweight by about 10 pounds. And that's because he apparently cut down to where he was within like two pounds of the weight limit. Ended up in the hospital from the weight cut, and he had to be rehydrated. And so... He came in at 180 for a 175 or 170 pound fight. And shoot, he weighed in closer to the middleweight weight, which is 185. But he came in there. I expected him to look worse than he did because of that horrible weight cut. But obviously, he looked pretty good. So he looked good. You know, I mean, he lost to Woodley. Um, but it was a split decision. It wasn't a terrible loss. It was a boring fight, you know. But you can't ask, you know what? Honestly, from my experience doing any type of fighting stuff, it's, you don't want it to be a boring fight. No, no fighter wants to re be remembered as the boring fight of the night. But sometimes, like, you just can't do anything to further the excitement in your fight. And it's like, it sucks, man. It sucks just as bad for them as it does for us, as it does for the fans. So trust me, I've been on both ends, and um, nobody wants to have a boring fight. But unfortunately, that one wasn't that exciting. It felt like it just never really got started. Obviously, main event, super excited. The whole time I was like shaking like, yeah, they're coming back, you know? And if you guys didn't know, I've trained with Nick Diaz before. He's actually really good friends with one of my good friends. So they hang out actually a good amount, if you know what I'm saying. And um, train with Nick Diaz, super, really nice guy. I really like Nick Diaz. But I think that for the sport, it's better that Anderson Silva won. Um, just because Anderson Silva will come back and fight more. And Nick Diaz always seems really iffy if he's going to fight. And if he doesn't want to fight, it takes so much for it. Like, he just had a two-year layoff just because he didn't feel like it. And that's cool if he doesn't want to fight. But the thing is, for the sport, who do I think is better to have won that fight? It would definitely be Anderson Silva just because he's going to give us more matchups and stuff like that. And obviously, that's what, as fans, that's what we want, right? So, yeah. So, if you guys... Wonder what happened there. It was first round was awesome. Uh, Nick Diaz like laying down, backing up against the cage, like come on, come on, talking to him, you know, bring, uh, hit me, go ahead, all this stuff, pulling typical Nick Diaz stuff, talking to his opponent. Didn't slap him at all though, no Stockton slaps, but he uh, was talking a lot of mess, clowning around in the cage. The first round was nothing but clowning around, like Nick Diaz laid down and like, like laid down, and, like pose and was like, "Come on, bro." And standing up, leaning against the cage, and you know, Anderson Silva did a little bit of a showboating himself, just a little. First round was basically a dance off, which was hilarious. And overall, it seemed like Nick Diaz was coming forward more, and he was um, Anderson Silva pulled his typical rolling with the punches stuff when when Nick would hit him, and Anderson Silva looked good. You know, his chin looked good. He looked good. He was taking shots, um, but he was taking shots that he was choosing to take and rolling with the punches, just like he used to, which is good. Everybody's questioning his chin and stuff, but um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Everybody was questioning it. It looked pretty pretty good to me. And as far as people are saying that like it looked boring or whatever, he didn't look like like Anderson Silva didn't look slow at all in my opinion. What happened was you're fighting somebody guy like Anderson Silva is mainly a counter striker. He's mainly a guy who wants you to get you know overextend and he'll get you. But Nick Diaz never really did that. So the fight just kind of it lasted five rounds. Um, 
I would watch another five rounds of it. If somebody like was like, oh, there's five more rounds, I would watch it and I'd still be excited for it. I think there was a decent fight, but if it was anybody else fighting, people would have probably called it a boring fight. You know what I mean? And people are calling it that. But you got to think these guys are both coming off long layoffs. Uh, Silver's dealing with a big injury. Um, I definitely think that dealing with that stuff, it was a decent fight. You know what I mean? Anderson Silva, 150-45. So, what... Uh, I think that Nick Diaz was a more aggressor. I don't think that it should have been 50-45. Maybe like 50-47 or something like that. Sure. But that's a big difference because Nick Diaz was coming forward a lot. And Nick Diaz, of course, to pull the typical like, these judges, man, whatever. They're not good. Blah, blah, blah. But so after this, Nick Diaz said he's not sure if he's going to retire. Might walk away. Might not. And Anderson Silva was talking about fighting for the belt. But guess what? He, uh, Joe Rogan asked him if he was going to retire and, you know, what's next for him and kind of ominous words. Anderson Silva was just like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's next. Um, don't ask me about it. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I have to talk with my family. So will he retire? I honestly, I, I don't think that he will, you know what I mean? Because he talks so much about coming back and trying again for the title and all that stuff. And I just, I think that he's got more to give. I mean, whether it's super fights, whether, you know, he's fighting Michael Bisping or maybe they can throw enough money at GSP to get him back. There's still a lot of fights for Anderson Silva. And so, you know, if Nick Diaz would have won, I'm guessing he's taking the big paycheck and just sitting off for a long time. Maybe him losing will make Nick Diaz fight again. You know what I mean? But um, Nick Diaz is an interesting guy. I I'm not sure. He's super, super weird and funny. But yeah, so Anderson Silva won. And... Basically, he never really wants to talk, though. Like, after his fights, people always ask him, what's your next plan? He never says. So I, I'm not taking this as, like, oh, he's going to be retired. I'm taking it as typical Anderson Silva doesn't want to talk about the next fight after his current fight. That's how it is. So that's what happened here tonight at the uh, at the UFC events, which is, which is pretty cool, man. So just felt like giving my thoughts about it. If you watched the video this far, wow, my light just went off. Okay. Let me turn this on. Awesome. So if you watched the video this far, make sure you leave some love in the comment section below. Leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the fight. Subscribe if you're new. Os, I am overt and out.